Hey guys, it's me, Mario. <laughs> okay, no it's not. Um, today we're actually going to be doing the CS50 Problem Set 1 Mario Walkthrough. Now this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide for beginners. So what's the program actually about? Well, we need to print a pyramid whose height depends on the user. So if the user inputs a height of 8, we need to print a pyramid with a height of 8. If the, if the user inputs a height of 4, we need to print a pyramid with a height of 4, and so on and so forth. Now the only condition is that the user needs to input a number between 1 and 8. So anything outside that range, we need to re-prompt them for another height. So if the user inputs 0, that's outside the 1 to 8 range, so we need to re-prompt them again, ask for another height. If they input the number 42, we need to re-prompt them again, right? So we need to keep on re-prompting them as long as the range is outside 1 to 8. Right, and then we need to print a pyramid according to the height that they type in. So how can we go about doing this? Well, first of all, um, let's just do the normal stuff. Let's include our libraries, which are standardio.h and cs50.h. All right. Uh, now we want to start the program. And remember how we do that is int main void. And this is basically the equivalent of saying when green flag clicked on scratch, right? So now we want to prompt the user for some input, right? So let's create a variable. Let's call it height. Height equals, now how do we get some input from the user? Well, using the get function, right? So height equals to get underscore. And what type of data do we want here? We want a number between 1 and 8, right? So that's an integer. So we write get underscore int. Now we prompt the user for some input. Let's say enter height here. And don't forget the semicolon at the end. Okay. So we don't want to just do this once. As we said earlier, we want to keep on doing this as long as they input a number outside the 1 to 8 range, right? So for this, we can use a loop. And we can essentially use a do while loop, which basically means do the following while a certain condition is true. So we want to prompt the user for input while height is less than 1 or, and remember how we say or with those two lines, or height is greater than 8. Right? So no new information here so no new information here so far. What we're saying is as long as the height is less than 1 or greater than 8, we need to keep on asking the user saying enter height here. All right. And now let's just inform the computer that height is an integer. So just int height. This is just defining the height and just tell the computer, hey, height is an integer. All right. So that's what we've done so far. Uh, let's test out the program. Let's say make Mario. Okay, compiled uh, dot slash Mario to run it. Let's try a height 10. Okay, ask us again, let's say height zero. Okay, ask us again, let's say height four. Okay, so so far we know the program works, right? But now what do we need to do? We don't just wanna get some input. We actually need to go about building the pyramid. We need to print the pyramid, right? So for that, now let's just take a look at the pyramid first of all. So when we look at the pyramid here, we can see that there's some sort of pattern, right? Like there is one hash in the first line, two hashes in the second line, three hashes in the third line, and so on and so forth. So we know that it somehow involves using loops, all right? So let's first of all make a loop. Let's use a for loop. So for, now in the now we need to put some sort of variable, right? We can call this variable anything at all. We can call it i, j, k, x, david, whatever you want. But um, for the purposes of this video, since it's a beginner video, um, I'm just gonna call the variable row. And this is no function at all. I'm just calling it row because it helps me remember stuff. So I'm calling it row because I want this to make a new row. I want this loop to make a new row. So I set it to zero. I'll put a condition row less than height. Row plus plus. All right. So within this for loop, I want to say printf uh, a new line. And remember how we do a new line is just backslash n. Right, so basically what I've said here so far is as long as row is less than height, print a new line. All right, that's basically what I've said so far. And so why is this condition true? Why do we want to print a new row as long as row is less than height? 
because you might be thinking, isn't row equal to the height, right? Because we can see row one, row two, row three, row four, and the pyramid has height of four. So pyramid with a height of four has four rows. So why do we want to do row less than height? Well, the explanation is very simple. Now remember, we initialized row to zero, which basically means a pyramid with a height of four, and we, if we start counting from zero, the last row we'll get is three. So we can see that row zero has one hash, row one has two hashes, and so on. So now a pyramid with a height of four, and the last row is three, which is why we want to keep on printing a new row as long as row is less than height. Now what if we put it as less than equal to height? Then we would actually get a new row here with five hashes, and that would be row four. Now we don't want this because then the height of the pyramid would be five, right? So the condition here should be as long as row is less than height, right? So that makes sense so far. But now when we look at the pyramid, we don't just want to print new lines. Before printing every new line, we actually want to print a hash, all right? So we want to print a hash. So we need to make another loop, right? Because there is a pattern for the hashes as well. Like one hash in the first line, two hashes in the second, three in the third, and so on. So we know we need an, another loop, and let's put that loop inside the row loop. So let's call it um, another for loop. Let's call this one column, because rows go down, columns go across. So just intuitively, you can name it anything, literally anything. Just for the purposes of clarity, I'm going to name it column. So for column equals to zero, initializing column to zero. Some condition, we don't know what yet. Column plus plus. And for this, we want to print a hash, right? Printf, a hash. All right, and semicolon. Now, how do we go about finding out what the condition is? Let's just test it out first. Let's say column less than height. All right, and remember, we have to tell the computer that row and column are ints as well. So let's just go ahead and do that. Int row, okay. This is informing the computer that row and column are ints. All right, now that that's done, let's try to compile the program, make Mario. Okay, compiles. Let's run it, dot slash Mario. Let's say height of four. Okay, so it prints something uh, but it's not a pyramid, right? We don't want a block, we want a pyramid. So we know that there's a problem with the condition here. We don't want the same condition for row and column. We need to make it something else, something different. So the condition I'm going to put is column less than row. And basically what it means now is as long as column is less than or, or equal to row, print a hash. So how does this make sense? How do we uh, like put some logic into this? Well. It's very simple. So basically what I'm saying so far is if column is less than or equal to row, print a hash, right? That's my condition. So because the column loop is nested inside the row loop, remember here, the column loop is within the row loop. Every time row is increased, column is initialized to zero. So let's just read that one more time. Every time row is increased, column is initialized to zero. All right, just get that in your head. And that's because the column loop is nested within the row loop. All right, so let me just give you an example here. Uh, let's take a pyramid with a height of three, okay? So in the first loop, row is zero because we initialized it to zero and column is zero as well. So now it's gonna check for the condition. In the first loop, is column less than or equal to row? Yes, because zero is equal to zero, the condition is true, so we print a hash. Now, uh, column is gonna try to increase to one, and then it's gonna check again. Is column less than or equal to row? And this time the condition is not true because one is greater than zero. So column is greater than row, so it won't print a new hash here. So it prints a new line and goes to the second loop. All right, and the second loop, it's been row plus plus now, so row is one and column is once again initialized to zero, all right? Now it's gonna check. Is the condition true? Is column less than or equal to row? Yes, it is, because zero is less than one. So it's gonna print a new hash, and now column will try to increase again. 
and again it's going to check is column less than or equal to row yes because one is equal to one all right so it's going to print another hash and now column will try to increase again it's going to say column two and now we check again is column less than or equal to row and now it's not right because two is greater than one column is greater than row the condition is not true so we won't print another hash and instead, we're going to print a new line, and then we go to the third loop. Now it's been row plus plus again, so row is two, and column is once again initialized to zero. That's the key. That's the key here. Column is initialized to zero. All right. So now it's going to check: is column less than or equal to row? Yes, it is because zero is less than two. And hopefully, hopefully you're seeing some pattern here. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Now column will try to increase again. Column is one. Row is two. Is column less than or equal to row? Yes, it is because one is less than two, right? So we print another hash. Now column will try to increase again. So now it's going to check again. Is column less than or equal to row? Yes, it is because two is equal to two, right? It's going to print another hash. Now column will try to increase again. And it's going to say column equals three. Now I'll check for the condition again. And column is greater than row, so it does not meet this condition. So it won't print another hash. And that's the end of the program because we chose a pyramid with a height of three. And this is just an example. So now we can see that on row zero, we have one hash. On row one, we have two hashes. And on row two, we have three hashes. All right? And if you look at the initial pyramid here, this makes sense because on row zero, we have one hash. On row one, we have two hashes, and so on and so forth. So hopefully it makes sense so far. Um, let's try to compile the program, make Mario, and dot slash Mario to run it. Let's try a pyramid with the height of four. Okay, so it does print a pyramid, right? But it's not quite the pyramid we want because we can see that our pyramid, the one we print, is left aligned. Whereas the one we're required to print by CS50 is a right aligned pyramid. So how do we convert this pyramid from left aligned to right aligned? Let's take a look at that. So how do we how do we convert it, right? So here we have a left aligned pyramid and we want it to be right aligned. Okay? So all right. How do we go about doing that? Well, what we can do is simply add spaces. So let's add some spaces there. All right. So now we can see that all of a sudden the pyramid has become a, a right aligned pyramid, right? Now just um, just forget about these objects here. Like let's just assume there's spaces, all right? I'm just putting those objects, those symbols just for clarity's sake. So let's assume these are spaces. And all of a sudden we have a right aligned pyramid. So we now know that to convert a pyramid from left aligned to right aligned, all we need to do is add spaces. So how do we actually go about doing that? Well, we need to know how many spaces we should print on every row, right? So let's try to find some sort of relationship between height, spaces, and rows. So for example, let's just take a pyramid of height four, right? And this is row zero, row one, row two, and row three. So we can see that on row zero, there are three spaces, right? On row one, there are two spaces, and on row two, there's one space, right? So let's try to figure out a relationship somehow. Okay. So a pyramid of height four, row zero, three spaces. Height is four, row is one, two spaces. Height is four, row is two, one space. All right, so hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here somewhat. Four, zero, three, four, one, two. 4, 2, 1. All right. So I deducted a pattern here, uh, which I think you can as well, which is that height minus row minus 1 is equal to spaces. So 4 minus 0 minus 1 is equal to 3. 4 minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 2. 4 minus 2 minus 1 is equal to 1, and so on and so forth. All right. So this works with the pyramid of any height. So let's take another example. So let's say height of pyramid is six and on row zero, there are five spaces, right? Six minus zero minus one is equal to five. 
6 minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 4. So hopefully, or, so hopefully you already understand the pattern here and we came up with the formula, right? Which is basically space equals to height minus row minus 1. And this is just the formula we deducted here. So now that we know the formula, how do we actually go about putting it into code, right? So now we can see here that on every single line, the spaces come before the hashes, right? Spaces and then the hashes. So it makes sense here that we put this that we put the loop for the spaces before the loop for the hashes, right? So let's make another loop here, another for loop within the row loop, right? Before we print a new line, we want to put spaces first. So this just makes sense. So for let's create another variable called space for space equals to zero. Space less than height minus row minus one space plus plus, right? This is just the condition is just the formula we found out earlier. So for this, we want to actually just print f a space. All I do is press the space bar and semicolon. And let's compile the program. Hopefully it works. All right, we got an error. And that's because we forgot to define that space is an int, right? So space here. Oh, and by the way, we can also just like write int here instead, like int row, if you don't want to do it up there. But I just prefer for like, um, just to make it neat, right? I just put it all at the top. So these are all ints, and now let's try to make Mario again, compile it, all right? Well, dot slash Mario, and right here, four. All right, so it does print what we want, that's great. Let's try it again, dot slash Mario. Let's try five. All right, so it seems to work, right? Uh, works well. Now, before submitting the program, we let's actually check. All right, so CS50 will check it for us. So what, how we do that is we just need to copy this line over here, copy to the terminal window, and now it's going to automatically check for us. And actually, in a while, it's going to prompt us for a GitHub username. All right, just type that in, and our password as well. All right. So once you check all that, you can actually check for the formatting as well. And this is style 50 and there are points for this as well. So you might as well do it. So you copy this into the terminal window as well, the same way we just did. And when you're satisfied with these, you can actually just go ahead and submit the final program, right? That's just by copying this into the terminal window. All right. I don't want to submit it because I've already submitted it. Um, so you can just go ahead and do that. And we can see that everything here, is correct, everything's green, so it all works well, then you can just go ahead and submit it. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was clear. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And let me know which problem set you want me to tackle next. I'm thinking of doing the Mario more comfortable next, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But I'll also be doing the rest of them, cash, credit, week two, week three, week four. So make sure to subscribe for all that. And yeah, hope you enjoyed, guys. Bye, David.